University of Technology. The academic procession is about to enter the hall. Please stand.
please remain standing for the national anthem. The words are on the inside back cover of your program. It is my pleasure to introduce the presiding officer of tonight's ceremony, Mr Bill Scales AO, Chancellor of Swinburne University of Technology. Vice Chancellor, members of University Council, members of staff, distinguished guests, very importantly, graduands, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Swinburne University of Technology, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to this graduation and award conferral ceremony. We are very pleased that so many of you have been able to attend this most important occasion. This ceremony acknowledges the academic and research achievements of our students and represents a significant step in their process of lifelong learning. As a mark of respect to Australia's Indigenous people, Swinburne University of Technology acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land where we now meet to conduct this important ceremony. On the occasion of this ceremony, the council and staff of the university wish to share their pride and their congratulations with the graduands on their achievement. For all of us, this ceremony is a very special occasion. For the graduands, it means the culmination of years of study, hard work and achievement. For the parents, families and friends of the graduands, it means that all the sacrifices which you have made and all the support which you have provided have now finally been rewarded. I'm sure that you, just like us, feel a great sense of pride and happiness in seeing your friend or your family member succeed in this most significant way. For the academic and administrative staff of the university, there is enormous satisfaction in seeing our students successfully complete their studies. While this ceremony rightly celebrates the achievements of our students, it is also an important occasion for the university. Swinburne prides itself on the quality of the teaching and learning it provides and the excellence of its research. This celebration gives public recognition of Swinburne's ongoing commitment to provide our students with a range of high quality educational qualifications. These qualifications will undoubtedly assist them in making an ongoing contribution to their chosen profession. But very importantly for Swinburne, also to their particular community. Swinburne is committed to being a nationally and an internationally recognised institution where our education programs and our research are relevant to the world community 
as well as to Australia. We're committed to this goal because increasingly, and many of the graduates here today will be no exception to this rule, many of our graduates are required to work outside of Australia and many of them will establish successful international careers. And of course our researchers are routinely collaborating with other scholars from all around the world. I'd now like to call upon Professor Ian Young, Vice-Chancellor and President of Swinburne University of Technology to introduce tonight's guest speaker. Chancellor, it is with pleasure that I introduce Professor Joran Roos to deliver tonight's occasional address. Professor Roos is chairman of VTT International, honorary professor at Warwick Business School, visiting professor of intangible asset management and performance management at the Centre for Business Performance at Cranfield University, and senior advisor Asia Pacific at Alto Executive Education Academy. He has been visiting Professor of Innovation Management and Business Model Innovation at VTT Technical Research Centre of Finland, part-time visiting Intellectual Capital Adjunct at the Melbourne Business School, Mount Eliza Centre for Executive Education, and part-time Industrial Professor of Strategy and Internationalisation at the Norwegian School of Management in Oslo. He has also been a visiting research associate in technology-based business development at the Institute for Policy Science located at the University of Saitama campus, Kitirawa, Japan, and in biotechnology at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala, and in intellectual capital at Henley Management College. Joran is a founder or co-founder of several companies in many countries and is presently the Managing Director for Int Intellectual Capital Services Limited and has worked as a consultant in more than 50 countries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I invite Professor Joanne Roos to deliver tonight's occasional address. Chancellor, Vice Chancellors, Members of the University Council, distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Today, each new graduate in this room is to be congratulated on beginning their journey into the real world, a world that will provide each of you with challenges and opportunities. During the Italian Renaissance period, the principle of human endeavor was that each of us has the potential to master our chosen discipline, and hence, each of us has the obligation to become the master of our chosen discipline. That's an important statement to reflect on, because sometimes today, we do not take up that obligation. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of leading the Design Roadmap Project in Victoria. One of its key conclusions was that the relationship between academia design industry and user industry was somewhat broken. The relationship that is most broken is the one with user industry. Design is a fundamental methodology for a firm's ability to generate value in the minds of its stakeholders. It is a methodology and basis for innovation that is different and complementary to the other two important approaches to innovation technology-based innovation, and business model-based innovation. In Australia, this design-based approach to innovation is largely absent in industry, and hence, I would very much like to encourage you to take this less trodden path to success in your profession. For those of you that are aiming for an exciting entrepreneurial career in your own firm, I would like to give you a simple piece of advice. A successful business is founded on five principles. First, find a problem that matters to somebody with money. <laughs> Frequently forgotten, right? Secondly, hire competent staff to solve the problem. Thirdly, 
embed the well-designed solution in repeatable processes supported by a brand or a reputation. Four, build and leverage relationship. And finally, know when to exit. Please note that the success is not primarily about solving problems, something you have been taught for some time now, but about identifying problems, something that you may not have been taught for the same amount of time. For those of you who are embarking on an academic journey, I would like to remind you of the obligations that all academics have. You have four principal obligations. The first one is to contribute to academic discourse, normally done by writing articles and other interesting things. Secondly, to contribute to the educational discourse, the aspect that many of you have mostly seen. Thirdly, to contribute to the practice discourse, helping companies, government do better. And finally, to contribute to the public discourse, be part of the creation and participation in debate about important issues. They are all equally important, no matter what a reward system may say. For those in the field of education, I would like to congratulate you on choosing one of the most rewarding careers carrying one of the highest responsibilities, that of contributing to the learning of future generations. You are the custodians of the past and the enablers of the future. Cherish and nurture this responsibility well. Life is a continuous journey of learning, and there are three skills that I would strongly recommend that you add to your existing skill base to facilitate this journey. Firstly, add the ability to sell. No matter where you go or what you do, you are always selling. If it's not your concept or idea, it is yourself as a person. Be good at it. Secondly, Selling requires the ability to communicate, so learn to communicate in as many languages as you can. And this includes the cultural understanding of the countries and languages you will work with. You will deal with many situations that involve financial issues and technological performance, so learn the language of these, which is basically mathematics. It is just another language, but it opens the door to a much greater world of opportunities and is frequently misunderstood. Le don't learn maths, learn to speak maths, and it's a distinction in those two. On this, the first day of your journey, I would say to you all, live a life where you can wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, like what you see, and rejoice in the fact that it is Monday morning and you can finally return to what is your passion in life. With that, I wish you good luck for the future and make yourself, your family, your friends, and your university proud. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Roos, can I thank you on behalf of all of the graduates and all here present for an outstanding occasional address, and would you please accept this very small gift as a gratitude for what you have given us tonight. Thank you very much, Professor. I now call upon Ms Jan McAdam, Associate Director of Client Services, to verify that the graduates listed in the program are in fact eligible to receive their awards. Chancellor, I have the honour to inform you that in accordance with Statute 13 of Swinburne University of Technology, the graduates who will be presented at this ceremony or who have applied to have their award conferred in absentia have fulfilled the conditions prescribed and are eligible for the award of bachelor degree, graduate certificate, graduate diploma, master's degree, professional doctorate, and doctor of philosophy as appropriate of Swinburne University of Technology. Could I ask all graduates to please rise for the conferral of awards? <clears throat>
by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Swinburne University of Technology, I admit the duly authorised graduates here present and those in absentia to the appropriate awards and to all the rights and all the privileges of those awards. Let me have the privilege of being the first to congratulate you. Well done. Graduates, please take your seats. I now call upon Dr. Carolyn Barnes, the Associate Dean Research of the Faculty of Design, to present her graduates. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the graduates on whom you have conferred an award for the Bachelor of Design in Communication Design, Nicholas Burris. <laughs> Laura Brown. Jaime Ricardo Calero. <laughs> Sivan Claire Carmody. <laughs> Elizabeth Kathleen Chitty. <laughs> Hannah Frances Connors. Erin Lee Henriksen. <laughs> Nicholas Roger Hobbs. <laughs> Vincent Chi Hang Lai. <laughs> Chue Bing Lao. Gazala Mohammadian. <laughs> Pierce Michael O'Brien. <laughs> Annabelle Edie Pitt. <laughs> Tushan Shumpton. Virginia Kim Singleton. <laughs> Matthew Peter Slade. <laughs> Dan Gabrielle Soto. <laughs> Tristan Frederick Tan Weir. For the Bachelor of Design in Industrial Design, Jack Joseph Allwood. <laughs> Lloyd Julian Lamberti. <laughs> Adib Olinga Sabet. Mark James Sullivan. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Design in Interior Design, Claire Louise Beatty. <laughs> Andrew Ian Boddington. Erin Bryant. <laughs> J. 
Jonathan Peter House. Paul M. Manley. T. Tui Lin No. Nok Nam Hung Nguyen. Emma Louise Ross Edwards. <laughs> Stephanie Saras. <laughs> Tanya Tong Suk. <laughs> Andrew Zunica. For the Bachelor of Design in Multimedia Design, Jonathan James Adam. Jonathan James Isla. Mung Jian. Stanley Lim. Kok Yong James Sir. <laughs> Erica Teng Santomo. <laughs> Nat Min Tran. <laughs> Lachlan Patrick Wright. For the Bachelor of Design Honours in Communication Design, Brandon Raymond Aranyosi. <laughs> Jasmine Tzu Min Chong. <laughs> Fiona Marie Miras. Felicity Laura Mitchum. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Design Honours in Industrial Design, Jessica Ann Katzenwadel. <laughs> Donald Kwon Ho Ng. Ching Ui Tan. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Design Honours in Interior Design, Carolina Eva Kizel Kizelski. <laughs> Shan Teresa Neem. For the Bachelor of Film and Television Honours, David Lee Broder. <laughs> Belinda Catherine Green. <laughs> Stephen Sheldon. For the Master of Design in Communication Design, Nathan Ian Haywood. <laughs> Arundhati Makaya. <laughs> Philip Pahin. Fiona Ann Smith. For the Master of Design in Interior Design, 
Jin Ling Yang. For the Master of Design in Multimedia Design, Hyun Yan Moon. Stefanto Tandiasaraya. <laughs> Chancellor. That concludes the awards for the Faculty of Design. I now call upon Professor Kay Lipson, the Dean of the Faculty of Higher Education, Lilydale, to present her graduates. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the graduates on whom you have conferred an award. For the Bachelor of Business, Anmol Yotesh Bali. <laughs> Ratesh Bhattacharya. <laughs> Genevieve Pearl Blackman. <laughs> Sarah Boo Ganim. Benjamin Radcliffe Brown. Georgia May Brown. Nazarene Brunus. Courtney Patricia Cairns. Naomi Kate Cameron. Glenn Charlton. Nicholas Andrew Christo. Kieran Paul Clifford. Kimberly Jane Davis. Lauren Pamela Devlin. Davina Delacia. Laura Jane Donegan. James Michael Driscoll. <laughs> Justin Ross Falou. <laughs> Nicole Elise Gottliebson. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Goff. Miranda Elizabeth Grieve. <laughs> Ashley Halsell. <laughs> Jessica Ann Hassan. <laughs> Jonas Bruce Gibald. Natasha Jovanovic. <laughs> Peter Curry. <laughs> Bernadette Kiralee. <laughs> Tanya Croons. Nathan Gregory Lacamia. <laughs> Will
William Alastair Lamont. <laughs> Justin Andrew Lang. <laughs> Lim Yong Zan Kenneth. Diana Lopez. Christopher James McKenzie. Dominic Paul Maserati. Joel Peter McGiven. Jade Louise Minahan. <laughs> Caitlin Therese O'Brien. <laughs> Kate Diane Olaris. <laughs> Elizabeth Operek. Laura Pasqualotto. <laughs> Kiera Pay. <laughs> Jocelyn Bronwyn Claire Price. <laughs> James Thomas Sheena. Mark Nathan Smedley. <laughs> Matthew Chapaniak. <laughs> Emil Tambaya. <laughs> Philip Triantafalu. Renee Veldman Tentori. <laughs> Christian Francis Westgarth. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Business in Accounting, Dale Marion Asprey. <laughs> Suman Bahaya. Jackie Bardsley. <laughs> Nicholas John Bortolin. <laughs> Hong Tong Chan. <laughs> Megan Louise Collins. <laughs> Alan Gordon Hales. Ben Simon Hall. <laughs> Braden Alice Hamnett. <laughs> Simone Jan Hughes. <laughs> Tikshan Lee. Jagan Mahendran. <laughs> Mansour Najibi. <laughs> Suzette Karadina Pereira. <laughs> Malahe Shadlu Panini. Catherine Marie Torpy. <laughs> Kate Ruth Vandervelt. <laughs> Wei Wa. <laughs> Q 
Jun Jiang. For the Bachelor of Business in Accounting and Advanced Diploma of Business in Accounting, Daniel Ansel. For the Bachelor of Business in E-Commerce, Michael George Hines. Daniel Coe. Chen Yan Liu. Meng Yu Liu. For the Bachelor of Business in Tourism and Management, Shladana Kalich. Caitlin Roberts. For the Bachelor of Business in Tourism and Management and the Diploma of Hospitality in Management, Wen Wing Lam Chung. Chloe Khan Hu Tran. For the Bachelor of Business and Advanced Diploma of Business in Marketing, Abby Kathleen Fleming. Sarah Elizabeth Leverett. Stacey Ann Mahan. Jessica Stacey Schbach. Justin Tallis Williams. <laughs> Corny Yin. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Social Science, Elise Ellen Bentley. <laughs> Felicia Celeste D'Alessandro. <laughs> Jacinta Elizabeth Kim. Tyson Stewart McNamara. Kate Ann Louise Ocapinti. Karen Jane O'Donnell. Nicole Scamboloni. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Technology and Information Systems, Adam Lilan Aruka Dasham. Curtis Andrew Lowe. Robert William Sidebottom. Elliot Alexander Willink. For the Graduate Diploma of Business in E-Business and Communication. Stephen Wardle. For the Master of Arts in Writing, Adrian Murphy. Ephthalia Pegios. Dorothy Beatrice Williams. <laughs> For 
For the Master of Technology in Business Systems Design and Management, Anthony Mark Benchy. Peter Lindsay Earls. <laughs> Eric Mercia. <laughs> Charlie Marazza. <laughs> Donna Mary Walker. Jim Stathopoulos. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the graduate on whom you have conferred the Doctor of Philosophy, Robert Francis Bannigan. Robert's thesis title is A Quantum Bridge Between Right and Left Hemispheres, a Novel and Exegesis. This thesis consists of two parts, a work of creative writing in the form of a novel and an academic exegesis, which recounts and explains precisely how the novel came into being. The thesis introduces an innovative way to investigate and gain understanding about the mystifying concept of human creativity. By confining and unifying aspects of the contrasting fields of reflective practice, quantum physics, psychology, cognitive science, philosophy, metaphysics, psychotherapy, and spiritual teachings, the candidate has, has introduced a new methodology with which to examine creativity. The methodology opens possibilities for an interplay between hard science and spirituality. Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Robert Francis Bannigan for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the next graduate on whom you have conferred the Doctor of Philosophy, Peter Craig McIntosh. Craig's thesis title is Crisis Management, the Kennett Government and the Neoliberalising of Victoria. This thesis investigated the processes of the economic transformation that were undertaken by the Kennett Government in its two terms of governance. This was the most thoroughgoing attempt to create a new economic system in Australia in the last 40 years. The research looked at the extent to which it was successful, measured against the sociological theory that was in its third generation but had not been tested in the Australian political economy. The evidence presented showed that despite the government's commitment to transformation, it stumbled and failed to consolidate the economic shift. The thesis was an important piece of research in that it produced evidence from a local Australian perspective and took research considerations in this field about the Australian political economy beyond our borders and produced a new body of evidence to add to the third generational development of the theory. The nature and relevance of the knowledge produced means that future governments may view their roles as facilitators of capitalist expansion in a much broader setting than they had previously thought was necessary. Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Peter Craig McIntosh for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the next graduate on whom you have conferred the Doctor of Philosophy, Jacqueline Ross. <laughs> Jacqueline's thesis title is Holly Blue, Historical Novel and Exegesis. The artefact is a neo-Victorian novel with central themes of femininity, spiritualism, madness and friendship. The exegesis is in three parts. Firstly, a discussion of the neo-Victorian genre, then an explanation of how the historical fiction writers incorporate research into their writing, and reflection on overcoming narrative challenges. In the second part, the focus is on 19th century madness at both an experiential and theoretical level. The last section explores the significance of clothing in the artefact and the importance of this for the neo-Victorian novelist. This research is practice-led and underpinned by a feminist research methodology. Chancellor. 
I present to you Dr. Jacqueline Ross for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the next graduate on whom you have conferred the Doctor of Philosophy, Jason Lee Skews. <laughs> Jason's thesis title is Examining the Identification, Prevalence and Coping of Australian Primary School Students with Learning Disabilities. The finding from this study provides support for using group administered educational and intelligence tests that can be administered by classroom teachers to screen students for possible learning disabilities. This has important implications in terms of allowing whole classrooms of students to be assessed for learning disabilities, as well as providing teachers with important information so that appropriate accommodations may be employed to help such students. Support was also found for a theoretical model of coping resources, which identified internal control as an important resource that might be targeted in future interventions. Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Jason Lee Skews for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the awards for the Faculty of Higher Education, Lilydale. I now call upon Associate Professor Alex Tuchetsky, the Associate Dean Learning and Teaching Scholarship of Swinburne Professional Learning, to present his graduate. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you the graduate of whom we have confirmed an award for the graduate certificate in teaching and learning in higher education. Joyce Jiang. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the awards for Swinburne Professional Learning. I now call upon Ms Fiona Smith, who graduated today with a Master of Design in Communication Design to speak on behalf of the graduates. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the University Council, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Today, each student in this room has come to the end of a journey. We are all here to celebrate our graduation. On behalf of the graduating students, I would like to sincerely thank those of you who have supported us on our journey. From the very beginning, we have felt like a part of the university community. Like many of my fellow students, I moved to Melbourne to study at Swinburne, and the university community was an important part of making Melbourne feel like home. Swinburne has a fantastic reputation, not only for the quality of its teaching, but also for its close, supportive environment. The staff at Swinburne especially deserve our thanks for their assistance over the years. Every student here has been taught by someone with a passion for what they do, and their guidance, encouragement and wisdom will stay with us long after graduation. We must also thank our classmates for accompanying us on this journey. It has been a privilege to share a classroom with people aiming for the same goals. As a design student, the supportive feedback, constructive criticism and inspiring ideas of my classmates helped me to look at problems with a fresh perspective and continuously improve my work. But it's not just assignments and exams that make up a degree. It's also about growing as a person, something we couldn't have done without the support of our friends and families. Through all the challenges and rewards, they have been there for us, helping us to fit in some leisure time, offering financial assistance and listening to us. For all of us, this is a very proud moment and something we have worked towards for a number of years. We are honoured to have you here with us today to help celebrate our achievement. Now, as we start new journeys, we acknowledge those who have contributed to our studies. The knowledge, friendships and experiences that we have gained during our time at Swinburne will help us succeed on whichever path we choose. 
To my fellow graduates, congratulations and the best of luck for the future. Thank you, Fiona. That was terrific. Well done. <laughs> to Swinburne graduates, I know that today is the culmination of years of hard work and that during this time you've had the encouragement and help of family and friends. On yours and the university's behalf, I do wish to thank them most sincerely for their support of your studies here at Swinburne and for being here tonight to see you graduate. I am sure that they, like us, are very proud of all that each one of you has achieved. Graduates, I'm now going to ask you to stand, turn and face those that helped you through this journey and join with me in loudly applauding them for what they've done for you. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, graduate. Please take your seats. Graduates, on your behalf, I would also wish to take this opportunity to thank the academic and administrative staff of the university for their contribution to your education here at Swinburne. Could I ask all of the staff to please rise? Graduates, join with me in thanking them as well. Thank you. Graduates, I do hope that you will consider that this is really just the beginning of a lifelong association with us here at Swinburne. Education is a continuing process, and I do hope that many of you will return to Swinburne to further your studies. I would also encourage you to participate in the activities of the Swinburne Alumni Association. The Alumni Association has groups in many parts of the world. So even if some of you are leaving Melbourne, it doesn't mean that you have to end your relationship with us here at Swinburne. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude the formal part of this Swinburne graduation and award conferral ceremony, I once again offer my congratulations to all who have received an award tonight. Well done, congratulations. On behalf of the members of the Council of the University community, I invite you to join us for refreshments, which will be served in the chandelier room. Would you please now stand while the official party, academic procession and procession of graduates leave the hall.
Swinburne University of Technology.